Okay, OpenAI have released their new model, GPT 5.1. And in this video, I'm going to show you the improvements of this model. Recently, I did a few test videos where I asked models to build a game and also a habit tracking app. We compared the results of those models. The winner of those was actually GPT 5 Codex. Now I've asked GPT 5.1 Codex to build those same apps and the results are remarkable compared to what GPT-5 did. It's a huge improvement on what we saw originally from GPT-5 Codex. So in this video, I'm going to show you the differences between the two models, show you the improved result that I got from GPT-5.1 Codex, so you can see just how much better this new model is. Firstly though, just a quick overview of GPT-5.1 and the updates. You can see here that GPT 5.1 is designed to be even more efficient. They're releasing extended prompt caching for up to 24 hour cache retention. That drives fast responses for follow up questions at a lower cost. On coding, they've worked closely with startups like Cursor, Cognition, Augment Code, Factory, and Warp to improve GPT 5.1's coding personality, steerability, and code quality. In general, GPT 5.1 feels more intuitive to use for coding and more communicative with user facing updates as it completes tasks. On the few tests I've ran, I have noticed better code quality and it's one-shotting these apps and games a lot better and a lot higher quality than what GPT-5 Codex did. So it looks like a big improvement on the surface from the few tests I have run. And we can see here that GPT-5.1 also spends less time on easy tasks and more time on hard tasks. So it's better for token management. It's going to spend less tokens on the easy tasks and attribute more tokens to those more difficult tasks. And we can see that outlined here, GPT-5 uses roughly 250 tokens for the same task. GPT-5.1 will now only use about 50 tokens for that same task and do it a lot quicker, two seconds rather than 10 seconds. And we can see further here on coding, GPT-5.1 builds on GPT-5's coding capabilities with a more steerable coding personality, less overthinking, improved code quality, better user targeted update messages, during sequences of tool calls and more functional front-end designs, especially at low reasoning effort. On simpler coding tasks like quick code edits, GPT 5.1's faster speed makes it easier to iterate back and forth. GPT 5.1's faster speeds on simple tasks don't degrade performance on difficult tasks. On SWE bench verified, GPT 5.1 works even longer than GPT 5 and reaches 76.3% in accuracy. We can see that outlined in this graph below. It will think longer and spend more tokens on some of those difficult tasks, but the accuracy of the response is a lot better. We can see GPT-5 Codex High was getting around 73% accuracy with around 10,000 tokens. The upgrade here is that we're now getting 76% accuracy with about 18,681 tokens. An increase from 73% to 76% accuracy might not seem like a lot, but it is a big difference, especially with these coding tasks and you'll see with the results we got with the habit tracker test and the avoid the box game that we asked GPT 5.1 codex to build the result and the difference is massive so it's it's a really exciting update and let's now dive into those apps and we'll see how they did so let's now jump over and have a look at the habit tracker app we'll start with the one that GPT 5 codex built and then I'll show you the difference in the one that GPT 5.1 has built Firstly, here is the Habit Tracker app that GPT-5 Codex built. I recently published a video where I did a speed test with four models. We tested Claude Sonnet 4.5, GPT-5 Codex, Grok Code, and Cursor's new model Composer, and asked each model to build a Habit Tracker app. I'll link the video in the description below and on this video in the top corner. So if you want to check out that full test and see exactly what we did for all four models, in that case, you can check out that video. For this video, this is the GPT-5 Codex version that was built. I'll show you quickly how it did with the build, and then I'll jump over and show you the 5.1 version and the differences that were very obvious when I tested both. The prompts I used were very similar for both. The only difference is that for the GPT-5 Codex one, I actually did a couple of follow-up prompts to fix a few bugs. So it's actually had more of a chance in this case to get to this point. Whereas with Codex 5.1, it has one-shotted the Habit Tracker app. GPT-5 Codex originally built 
the Habit Tracker app and it had a few bugs and I believe there might still be a few bugs as well. GPT 5.1 Codex one-shotted the Habit Tracker app and I haven't found any bugs yet. So already that suggests better code quality because we haven't found any bugs off a one-shot build. The GPT-5 Codex version took a few goes and a few follow-up prompts to fix a few issues. But let's have a quick look at the Habit Tracker app for GPT-5 Codex. We can see we've got a light and dark mode here. We can see we can add a habit. So let's say drink 10 litres of water is one of our goals. This is a health goal. We want to do that every day. And keep healthy and hydrated for why it matters. So we've got these sections we can fill out and click add habit. We've got some habits already here from the previous video where I tested. We can see that we now have our drink 10 litres of water habit here. We've got a streak. We can tick off each day. The difference is that it kind of doesn't line up perfectly with the calendar above. So it's a bit hard to keep on track with what day you need to tick off each time. You can also see that there looks like there's a bug of of tick one and then I can't tick off any more. It has 5% this month as a progress bar, but all I can do is tick off the one day. For read 10 pages, I can tick off four here, but I can't tick off the next three. It's again telling me my progress for the month. Four days though, it is telling me is 26%. So that's also a slight bug here. We can see that we can also go to focus mode, which is going to show us a different view. And then we have some key metrics at the top. So we can see this month's completion, 29%. We've got habits, so two out of three are active. We've got check-ins, so how many uh, we've logged this month, and then a top streak. Again, there's some bugs here. The streak is a little bit buggy. The progress bar for the month is also a little bit buggy, so it's saying 29%, but you can see here we've only really ticked off four days, so it shouldn't be 29% for the month. This is actually a weekly view but it seems to be kind of mixed between weekly and monthly. So that's a quick look at the Habit Tracker app that GPT-5 Codex built. As you can see, there's a lot of features here. It's very feature rich, but there are some bugs and it's not all that user friendly really with ticking off the items in the Habit Tracker section here because we can't really line it up perfectly with the days above. It's just highlighting a box when we tick it and, and there's some inconsistencies with the progress bar and the tracking. So that's what we got from GPT-5 Codex. Let's now jump over and have a look at GPT-5.1 Codex. So here is the version that GPT-5.1 Codex has built. Again, this was a one-shot build. There's no follow-up prompts or bugs that I've fixed. All I did was give it the same build prompt and this is what it has produced. So we can see the UI looks really good. We've also got a dark mode option here similar to GPT-5 Codex. We've got a weekly completion tracker here. We've got a today tracker and then momentum. So we've got our streak and we can now add in some habits. We've got a name, a category, and we can also assign a color. So let's do morning hydration. We'll say that is health. We'll use blue for the color and click add habit. Let's also add in meditation, we'll leave wellness and we'll change the color to red, we'll add that one in. So we've now got two habits. If we scroll down, it's now a much better outlay in terms of our individual habits and how we can track them. We've got actual days assigned to each box here that we can tick off as opposed to the GPT-5 Codex version which just had an empty box and we had to try and line it up with a date that was above and it was kind of hard to know what was going on. It's a lot clearer here in this version. We've got Thursday, for example, and if we hover over that, we can also see the date, November 13. We can tick that to tick it off, and then the progress bar updates to 14%. So we can see that that is accurate in terms of the weekly progression. 14% lines up with one out of the seven days. If we tick Thursday off for both, we can then scroll up. We can see that weekly completion is accurate. It's saying 14%. We've ticked off two out of 14 habits. Today says zero out of two, probably because it's not seeing Thursday as today. It's seeing Wednesday here, which is November 19, which is accurate. Today is November 19. So it is accurately updating today once I tick off Wednesday, November 19. 
So if we scroll up to the top, we can see now with the extra ones I've ticked off, I've completed everything for meditation and I've ticked off today and last week's for hydration. If we scroll up, we can see weekly completion is accurate, 64%, 9 out of 14 have been ticked off. We're 2 out of 2 for today, 100%, and then momentum, 7 days for meditation. We've done 7 in a row there. If I tick off the rest for hydration, that would also update that. So if we remove today, that should change to morning hydration as the streak of 7 days. Weekly completion, again, is updating at 93%. Today is now 1 out of 2 because of unticked meditation. So you can see this is a clear improvement on GPT-5 Codex. It's much easier to see exactly what days need to be ticked off with the way this is outlined. The UI, I think, is also an improvement. I like the way that it's laid out with these clear boxes here for each section. The progress trackers are also accurate. That was a definite bug with not only GPT-5 Codex, but the other three models I tested in that video. They all had bugs with the tracking. I'll link that video again in the top right if you want to have a look at how those other models did with this test but again gpt 5.1 codex is a clear improvement it's done much better with the ui and the layout and the functionality from just a one-shot build let's now jump across and have a look at the game i asked gpt 5 codex to build and we'll compare that to the game that gpt 5.1 codex has built so here is the avoid the box game that GPT-5 Codex built. For context, I recorded a video recently where I compared GPT-5 Codex to GLM 4.6 and tested them both on building an avoid the box game. I'll link that video in the description in the top right corner if you want to check that out to see the full process of how I prompted both models to get to this point. For this video, we will review the GPT-5 Codex version, which you can see on screen, and we'll compare that to the version that GPT-5.1 Codex built. Again, for further context, the prompt that I gave GPT-5.1 Codex was the exact same as what I gave to GPT-5 Codex. The only difference has been that I did follow up prompt and correct a few bugs in the GPT-5 Codex version to get it to this point. Whereas the GPT 5.1 version one shot of the build and I haven't found any bugs yet. So that's another notable call out on GPT 5.1 codex. Not only has it, in my opinion, created a better version of the game, but it one shot it without any bugs as opposed to GPT 5 codex, which needed some prompting to fix a few issues. Let's now test the game. So I'll hit begin night shift and that will start the game. You can see we've got the boxes falling from above. And we can control the character with left and right to avoid the objects. I can't remember if the small ones are power-ups or not. I think they are objects, so I'll avoid them just for the moment. We can see we've got kind of a background graphic. And then they're starting to get a bit quicker, but they're just falling straight down. I'll try this yellow one. It is a shield, so that is a power-up. So we can use those power-ups. You can see I've got a shield now around the character. The objects are getting quicker, but there's no extra ones really. That, that, that doesn't seem to be more coming down to make it more difficult. And that's the end of the game. So that's an example of the GPT-5 Codex version. We can see there that it is a working game. Uh, the differences, I think, with GPT-5.1, which I'll show you shortly, is the graphics and UI, I think, is an improvement, as well as the fact that it one-shotted the build. If we click Run It Back, that starts the game again. So that is a look at the GPT-5 Codex version. And here we have the GPT-5.1 Codex version. In my opinion, straight away, the UI is an improvement. I like that we have the full background here that includes the game background as opposed to just a color background. And then this box here that we can see that says avoid the box and has our start button is a lot nicer. If we flick back to the GPT-5 Codex version, we can see it's just got the color background and then this box, whereas I think the GPT-5.1 Codex version is a definite improvement. We can hit start run to start the game and test it out. We can see the objects falling from the sky. We can see there's some flashing happening on the background, sort of like a lightning effect to add visually to the game. We can also see top left we have a wind indicator and that's causing the objects to go left and right. So that's also a feature and a mechanism that's included in the GPT-5.1 version, whereas GPT-5 only had the objects falling straight down, whereas there's an extra element here where they're moving left to right. There are power-ups you can see I'm picking up that slows things down. There's a lot more objects falling here in this version. 
and I've hit one of them there to end the game. So that's a look at the 5.1 Codex version. Visually an improvement. We've got some added mechanisms that make the game a bit more engaging. Might not be a massive difference at first glance, but again, when you consider the fact that this was a one-shot build compared to GPT-5 Codex, which had bugs I needed to prompt and fix, it's an impressive result and a big improvement on the GPT-5 model. We can see here, off one prompt, it has built a functioning, interesting game. So another example of the improvement that we are seeing from GPT-5.1 Codex. So I hope you enjoyed that look at GPT-5.1 Codex. This will definitely be the model that I use the most moving forward. I'm also going to record a video on GPT 5.1 Codex versus Google's new model Gemini 3 Pro. It's recently been released and is getting a lot of hype. So I'm going to compare those two to see how they stack up against each other. If you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching.